Hi! In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean the controls in a Music & Sound intercom remote station. Now, what you have to understand is Music & Sound made lots and lots and lots and lots of different models of radio intercom systems. They tended to like to use different model numbers for every single version of any particular model that they made. So you could, for instance, have a model 20, which is the base model, and then there was a 20A, a 20B, a 20C, a 20D, 20E, and so forth. And that was very true for almost all the models that they made until you get somewhere towards the middle 1980s. And then it became less model numbers and it was easier. Their remote stations also have lots of different model numbers and lots of different configurations. This is a model, let's see if it says, no, of course it doesn't. That's the other thing about music and sound systems is they're not big on putting model numbers on things. So how do you know? I think this is a model N35, I think, but I'm not positive and I didn't go look because it doesn't really matter. What we're concerned about is not so much exactly what it looks like, not so much exactly about the shape, because this is a vertical speaker. They also made, at times, they made horizontal speakers that sat this way. The controls would be, they wouldn't be sideways like you couldn't read it, but the controls would be on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, and they were somewhat longer, but all that. And then they had their, what we would call 8-inch speakers, which had 8-inch speaker cones, and they were literally like 12 inches square. And then there were the outdoor patio stations, and they had aluminum grills in horizontal, vertical, and 8-inch versions. So lots and lots and lots of different kinds of speakers. But for the most part, for most systems, all the way up through the you know, probably the late or middle 1990s, the controls were all kind of the same. Depending on what system the speaker was actually designed to work with, you might have two intercom buttons. You could possibly have three intercom switches. They're not buttons, they're switches, sorry. Or some would have four. It doesn't really matter how many you have. If you have two, you have two you have to clean. If you have four, then you have twice as many you have to clean. But all in all, it doesn't make any difference. They all have some type of volume control that you turn the knob to raise and lower the volume. So I'm gonna show you on this one as an example because this is a nice size to work with in the video and it will give you the basic ideas of what you need to do. Now, when you go to clean your controls, the switches and the volume controls, you need something to clean it with. And what we recommend, and the only thing I've used for probably the last 20 years is this. This is Deoxit D5, and this is tried and true. You can count on it. It's not gonna melt the plastic. It's not gonna ruin your controls. It's not gonna do anything bad. It's gonna work really great. I know everybody's got their favorite and everybody likes to comment, oh, I've got this brand that I like and I have this other kind of con switch cleaner or contact cleaner. I don't recommend any of those. This is the only thing that I recommend. I specifically do not recommend, hey, I got a can of some stuff that's been on the shelf in my garage since 1972 and even though the label fell off, I'm pretty sure it's some kind of cleaner. Don't do that. I had a guy once, he had something like that. He used it. He said everything worked great. And then he got a hold of me two days later and said, hey, whatever was in that can, it melted all my plastic grills and now they're all ruined. It was probably some kind of carburetor cleaner. So spend the 12 to 14 bucks. You can buy this on Amazon. You get a lot in a can, it'll last you forever. Just get the right stuff and do it the right way. You know, there's an old saying, wire is cheap and labor is expensive. Now you're thinking, what the hell does that mean? Well, what that means is, for your time you're gonna spend doing this, do you really gonna chintz out on a 12 or $14 can of cleaner? I think not. These type of stations that they made starting sometime back in the probably mid or early 70s, all the way up through, say, the, uh, oh, roughly the mid to late 80s, all use pretty much the same type of switches and controls. So if we turn it over, it's actually fairly simple. You have a volume control pot here, and you have two slide switches here. Now the slide switches are spring-loaded, which means when you push them down and you let go, they pop back up all on their own. Isn't that nice? Same thing with this one. So what happens to these? Well, what happens to them is 
the contacts inside the intercom switches, which are metal, they get oxidized over the year. They get dirt and dust and stuff that builds up inside of them because it filters down through the wall cavity in your house. And when you get dust on the metal contacts, the dust holds humidity, i.e. moisture, that's in the air where you live. And over time, that turns the shiny metal contact inside the switch kind of a dark black. And the dark black coating prevents it from making a good electrical connection. So when you go to move it like this, it doesn't always make a good connection. The other thing that happens is when you get dirt and dust build up, and we're talking about little microscopic -y stuff, especially for those houses that were built in the 80s and early 90s with that gray blown in cellulose insulation, which is really horrible. Basically, it's ground up newspaper. When that gets inside the switches and you move the switch like this, it scratches the metal contact microscopically. And when you move the switch, it makes a horrible scratchy sound, which people hate. So cleaning will resolve that. The volume control here is a little bit different because it's a little more complicated, but it's called a wire wound potentiometer. What that means is inside of this is a round donut of carbon. It's think about pencil lead and wound around it is a really, really, really super fine wire about the size of your hair. And it's wound around it hundreds of times or a hundred times or a lot of times. And then the knob is connected to a, wire, a contact and the contact rests on the wire on the donut. And as you turn the knob, it moves the contact left and right, making it louder or lower. Now what happens in most houses is the contact that's connected to the knob sits in one point forever. It might stay there for 40 years and you never change it since the week you moved in. And then one day the grandkids come over and they're running around the house like little maniacs and they turn the knob from the clean spot where it's been sitting for 40 years to the dirty spot and the sound goes crackle crackle and goes away. That's because the wire that's wound around the donut oxidizes just like in the switches down here and you've moved the contact from the clean spot to the dirty spot it breaks the connection and you lose the sound so it needs to be cleaned to help remove the oxidation from the wire and get rid of the scratchy sound that you get when you move the contact by turning the knob and that way everything works really well now the thing about stations like this whether it's this one or this one or a big giant one or an aluminum outdoor one, it doesn't make any difference. You cannot clean any of this from the front. You can pull these off and you can get a little bit in here and spray it inside the switch, but you can't do that with the volume control. So to clean this, the reality is you have to take it off the wall. You do not have to disconnect the wires from it. You just unscrew from the wall, screw here and here or here and here or if it's a big one, there'll be screws here, 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 and here. You just unscrew from the wall. It'll be connected to its wire. It's easy. So once you've taken it off, you can turn it over and you can see the back. So these spring-loaded switches slide up and down and then the volume control will do less. So what I always do when I do this in people's houses is I always have a rag because you're gonna get a little overspray. You don't wanna get spray on the lady's walls because then she's gonna get mad and all that. So what you do is you push, we're gonna do this one first. We're gonna push the button down on the front and we're gonna spray a little cleaner into the switch. Now, when I say a little cleaner, I mean a little cleaner. That doesn't mean half the can. That means as little as you possibly can spray into it at one time we're talking we're going for here is like four to five drops or a half a second of spray something like that not a lot if it's all running down and it's puddling up down here down here you're doing something too much once you spray it work the switch up and down up and down up and down up and down i always tell people to do this with the system on and working because that way, when you spray it and you work the switch up and down, up and down, up and down, you can hear the improvement. You can judge how well the cleaning is going. And if the first time you squirted it is great, you're done. If it's still a little bit like, oh, uh, maybe it could be a little better, you can always push it down, spray just a little bit more and work it up and down. So we've done that one. 
Sounds great now, I can tell. We'll move these out of the way just a little bit so you can see. Now we're gonna do this one, spray. Work it up and down. Now this one was very sticky. Now, since I sprayed it, it's not sticky anymore. It moves very nicely and easily and you can feel it just glide along inside the switch like you want. So those are done. And I'm listening to it as I'm doing it because my system is on and working and there's no more scratchy sound. It's really great. Now we have to do the volume control, the wire wound potentiometer. So this is about a bigger round as a nickel, more or less. And you'll see right here on this side, there are these three contacts that come out of it. That's where the yellow, blue, and red wires are soldered. And on the body of it, the round part, right in this area, there's a gap or a slot where these contacts come out. That's where we want to spray the cleaner. So you take your cleaner and you spray a little bit into the slot. That was probably more than it needed to be, but when you're doing it left-handed while you're making a video and propping up the speaker so you can turn the knob properly, it's a little more tricky to do. And you turn it back and forth and back and forth. And if you're doing this while the radio is playing, which you should do, because not only can you then judge if it's cleaning up because the staticky sound goes away, but also you have something good to listen to while you're doing it. You know, that classic rock station, or maybe the ball game's on and you're listening to that. And your wife said, why are you always listening to sports? And it's like, I'm not listening to sports. I'm cleaning the speakers because they're staticky sounding and I'm doing home improvement. So, you know, it's a good thing. And then she won't say anything. All right, so we've cleaned the controls. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now, if you've got three of these to do, it won't take you very long. If you have 13 of them to do, it's gonna take you longer. And I can also tell you for a fact that if you have any of those outdoor aluminum grilled patio stations, you're gonna to have to do them a couple times because anything that's outdoors has a much harder life than anything that's indoors. And also, all things made for outdoors that were made in the say mid 70s through the mid and late 80s they're not very weather resistant not a lot of like gaskets and ceiling and all that kind of stuff they're pretty exposed and it's not much different than this it's like this station in aluminum is kind of the same so water and stuff gets down in there don't be surprised if you take a patio station off the wall and it's got 13 different kinds of bugs living inside of it because that happens also so those are the basic steps of cleaning the controls on many, many versions of music and sound inside and patio remote stations made between, say, the mid-1970s and the mid or late 1980s. I hope you found this interesting, and perhaps for someone it will be helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that will help us a whole lot. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.